General USMC RIT Charles Frank Bolden Jr. was nominated by President Barack Obama and confirmed by the U.S. Senate as the 12th Administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. At NASA, Bolden has overseen the safe transition from 30 years of space shuttle missions to a new era of exploration focused on full utilization of the International Space Station and space and aeronautics technology development. He has led the agency in developing a space launch system rocket and Orion spacecraft that will carry astronauts to deep space destinations, such as an asteroid and Mars. He also established a new space technology mission directorate to develop cutting edge technologies for the missions of tomorrow. We're now here with a very, very special guest. It's a, I think this is an ultimate treat for, for, <laughs> for us and, 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 and everything. And for me. <laughs> and and, and it, we were here with uh, Major General and Administrator uh, Charlie Bolden. Uh, I want to thank you and, and th thank uh, NASA for the opportunity to be here and, and have an opportunity to broadcast. Uh, we, we had uh, schools across the nation, uh, as far as the Canary Islands, wow. all across the United States, going all the way out to the Hawaiian Islands uh, uh, by the thousands that have uh, joined us. And, and, and I, I know your emphasis on the importance of education and, and especially with, with science. But I'd like to get your input because sure. I, and maybe have you tell a little bit of your story about the origins of NASA. Yeah. And, and as the administrator of NASA, what are your visions for the future? Sure. Uh, NASA is, uh, I, I tell people, I have to remind people all the time, although we were only founded in 1958, technically, we're more than 100 years old because mm -hmm. our, our heritage is from the old NACA, the National uh, Aeronautics, the National mm -hmm. Advisory Committee on Aeronautics that was established way back in 1915 when the United States found themselves, after having been the home, the birthplace mm -hmm. of aviation, we found ourselves following Europe and everybody else mm -hmm. because we couldn't figure out a, a thing to do with the Wright Brothers airplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the President and the Congress established mm -hmm. the NACA and from then on working with uh, what became an aviation industry, we built ourselves up to, to where we built the first supersonic mm -hmm. airplane, uh, we were the, the beginnings of going into space. And then in 1958, once again, it took a shock mm -hmm. uh, to let mm -hmm. us know that we needed to think about how we, how we attacked uh, issues that were before us, and that was when Sputnik went over here in mm -hmm. 1957. Wow. And it, it frightened the world because up until that time, no one had actually employed a satellite mm -hmm. that could go around the world. And mm -hmm. so, again, the Congress and the President, President Dwight Eisenhower in this case, decided that the United States needed an organization that would focus on space flight, on trying to get humans into space as well as satellites. Mm -hmm. And so NASA was born as, uh, under the National Space Act of 1958. Mm -hmm. Um, we've come a long way. We've put people on the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, we have continued to be a, a big player in, in aeronautics, uh, helping mm -hmm. industry to produce ever increasingly efficient airplanes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now into the realm of unmanned aerial systems, trying to mm -hmm. help the FAA with smoothing out travel in the skies. Uh, our science, uh, bar none, is the best in the world, whether you're talking about air, um, astrophysics or planetary science, mm -hmm. looking at our mm -hmm. own planet as one. Um, or whether you're just talking about heliophysics, looking at our sun. So, so NASA continues to go. We're on a journey to Mars right now. That's mm -hmm. the President Obama in 2010 mm -hmm. uh, challenged NASA in what I consider mm -hmm. to be a major space policy address mm -hmm. from the Kennedy Space Center. He challenged us to put humans um, on Mars in the 2030s uh, with the intent, put them in Mars orbit first with mm -hmm. the intent of landing. And he even said, and I intend to be there when we mm -hmm. do it. You mm -hmm. know, so which so makes me believe we got to do it. So we've been, we've been after exactly. that since 2010, and we're well on the way to Mars now for, with humans. Oh, that, that, that's absolutely fantastic. And, and, and for, for our, uh, our audience out there, and especially the young student audience, what are, what are some of the biggest challenges that we're going to be facing? Yeah. Because I know uh, going into space is not yeah. easy. Well, with your previous uh, participant in the program, you mentioned Katherine Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad you did because Katherine Johnson, is, I as you said, was there's a movie and a book about, about her and several other African-American mm -hmm. women called Hidden Figures. And the title of the book comes from the, the author lived in Langley, Virginia, where Katherine mm -hmm. and her, mm -hmm. her co cohorts worked. And her father, being a black engineer, was, mm -hmm. was working at Langley. So she said she never realized that people didn't think 
NASA didn't have <laughs> people of color. And so she decided to write a book on these incredible women because they went to her church. She saw mm -hmm. them all the time. Nothing's changed today for NASA. Mm -hmm. We need, the, what we need more than anything else if we're gonna get to Mars is the support staff. Mm -hmm. um, we have astronauts, but, but they're so, their number is so small in comparison with the, the, the entire team of now 17,000 NASA mm -hmm. employees and about 40,000 mm -hmm. contractors that support us. Mm -hmm. And they do everything from administrative work through law, medicine, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, the astronauts happen to be test pilots mm -hmm. for the most part and engineers. So we need a whole suite of people. What Shades of Blue does in promoting the STEM fields, science, mm -hmm. technology, engineering, and math, and you all have mm -hmm. adopted the same thing that, that my deputy, Dr. David <laughs> Newman, and I have, and adding the A in for the arts. For the arts. And, and now we've added a D on the end for design. Oh, I like because that. Because <laughs> we want young people to understand that no matter what their passion, mm -hmm. they can be a part of the NASA family. They can be a part of, mm -hmm. of building uh, this future and getting humans mm -hmm. to Mars. So mm -hmm. for any mm -hmm. student who's out there watching, no matter where you happen to be on the Distant Learning Network, um, I would say study really hard and, and really, really, really work as if you were playing a sport. You know, you wouldn't expect to be the best player on the football mm -hmm. team or the best player on the basketball team or the best dancer if you didn't mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. Have to do the same thing in the classroom. Yeah, and, and then the biggest mm -hmm. thing is mm -hmm. don't be afraid of failing. I could tell, mm -hmm. tell you the Willie Daniels story and we don't have time to do that, but, <laughs> but, but my friend Willie Daniels and I have known each other for a long time mm -hmm. and his alone is an absolutely incredible story of not being afraid to fail. Well, well, yesterday we were fortunate enough to uh, have uh, uh, retired astronaut and Colonel Fred Gregory on board and uh, to talk with the students and uh, and he retired from NASA yep. as the acting administrator back in uh, 2006 mm -hmm. and uh, he had an opportunity to talk about and with one, one of the uh, uh, Dr. Yvonne Cagle who was one of the uh, uh, other astronauts mm -hmm. here about the trip to Mars, and right now I understand about eight and a half months to get to Mars. Yeah, and, unfortunately. And, <laughs> and, and Colonel Gregory was saying, you know, what we need to do is focus on um, the time it takes to get there, because if we can figure out a mm -hmm. way, and this is a challenge for mm -hmm. all of those p young folks out there, figure out a way how do how do we shrink the time it takes mm -hmm. us to go from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. If we can shrink that time uh, for possibly speeding up the spacecraft, yep. we can get there within a week and we can do all of this yep. development and yeah. technology that, that, that we have since then. So I, I think that should be a big challenge to the next generation that's coming down the pipe. Absolutely. And, and what, what do you, uh, you see as, as your, your, your final uh, plans while you're here at NASA. Well, I've got a long time to go. We're, we're as, as we like to say, I'm, I'm with the president. And so um, I am in this job until the president mm -hmm. leaves office. So we're all sprinting to the finish line to mm -hmm. get to January the 20th. We've got a lot to do at NASA. We've got um, some tests that are upcoming um, with our, actually with our Orion crew module. Mm -hmm. uh, what is really important for us right now is working with our partner SpaceX and mm -hmm. Boeing on uh, getting uh, complete mm -hmm. the two vehicles that are going to be able to carry our astronauts mm -hmm. to the International Space Station within a couple of years so that we're no longer dependent on the Russians. So, and in the area of science, we're still working steadily on the James Webb Space Telescope that wow. will go into its final big test down at the mm -hmm. Johnson Space Center um, middle of next year, where it'll go into a vacuum chamber for a number of months to simulate what it's going to be like when it gets out um, a million and a half kilometers away from Earth, but mm -hmm. 2018, we're gonna launch that, and, and it will dwarf all that we know about our universe from the Hubble Space Telescope. So wow. a lot of things we're doing, trying to wow. help build new airplanes with X-planes and, mm -hmm. and everything. Wow, well, Administrator Bowles, it looks like we have a question coming in. Sure. We, we got a lot of eager audience <laughs> who wanna get some questions yeah. in. So uh, the, the question is, if you could have, if you, could have done it. Any, anything else, what would it have been? Nothing. I would not have done anything differently than I've done. I, and people ask me this question a lot. What, would you, what do you wish you could go back and change, or what do you wish you could have done differently? I am incredibly happy with, with mm -hmm. my place in life right now. I have uh, the three most wonderful granddaughters that anyone could ask for. They're mm -hmm. 16, 13, and, and 10. They're the, they're the love of my life, mine and my mm -hmm. wife's. We have an un mm -hmm. unbelievable son who's a colonel in the Marine Corps wow. and, um, and a daughter who is a plastic mm -hmm. surgeon at Howard University Hospital that's really interested in trying to help women of color 
battle, um, you know, just the fear of cancer, but mm -hmm. also to let them know that should they fall victim to it, that's not mm -hmm. the end of the road and there's always things that can go. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't touch anything that I've done in my life so far, to include the mm -hmm. mistakes. <laughs> I just, because I, you know, I, when I talk about mm -hmm. don't be afraid of failure, I, I really try to help students understand if, if you're trying to go through life without ever mm -hmm. failing, you're going to miss a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you should really follow your passion, take risks, but make mm -hmm. them smart risks. Mm -hmm. Because every time I have failed in my life, and I've done it a lot, mm -hmm. um, I have learned so much through failure that's made me even better the mm -hmm. next time around or made me stronger as a, as a person. So mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't go back and change anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I understand that one of your big passions right now yeah. is education. Yep, I am. <laughs> and, 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 and could you could you elaborate on yeah, that for me a little I, bit? I'm, <laughs> it's in my blood. I, I come, my wife and I both come from families of educators. We both grew up in the segregated South in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. My mother was a librarian at the elementary, middle school, and then high school level when they integrated the schools. Mm -hmm. And she became the first black librarian to go into a formerly white high school. My father was a teacher of civics and social studies and was my high school football coach. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, my, my in-laws were both principals at the elementary school level. So my wife and I were just, we didn't know anything except mm -hmm. how important education was. And wow. so I believe that in order for us to reach Mars, in order for us to do all the great things that NASA wants to do, we've got to have an educated populace and we have to have um, a significant representation mm -hmm. from women and minorities. You know, mm -hmm. we, Otherwise, we're going to miss a lot of talent in our mm -hmm. country. So mm -hmm. um, my job, my, my purpose in life is to try to go all the way down into kindergarten mm -hmm. and help kids understand that while they may not think they like math and mm -hmm. science, pick something mm -hmm. they do like, whether it's mm -hmm. painting or dancing or whatever. Mm -hmm. We'll help them understand mm -hmm. where math mm -hmm. and science come into that. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's a ballerina mm -hmm. that's, that's twirling and puts her arms out and <laughs> brings them in when she wants to go faster. And, we help explain, you know, what you just saw was physics, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's and it's based on math. So, um, that that's what I'm passionate about. Well, well that, that's ab that's absolutely fantastic uh, vision because we're, right now we're we it's my uh, belief that we have millions of kids that are viewing this yeah. right now across mm -hmm. across our nation, and and this is a, such a significant opportunity for them to to realize and see that this is very very important. They, that they will be the next intellectual capital. Exactly. Yeah. And 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 you know when when President Kennedy uh, back in in 1961 said, I I want to send a man to the moon. He didn't just want to send him one way. Bring he he's going to bring him back yeah, again yeah. safely. And not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Exactly. And 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 that's the same thing with your the vision going to Mars. Uh, we don't want to just send them on a one-way trip. We, we want to send them there back. and bring them, <laughs> bring them back. Not because it's easy, but because yeah, it's hard. Exactly. So we need the hard, dedicated work ethics in the kids to be the best that they can be, yeah. to be that. And, and it looks like we have another question coming in. What was your favorite oh, subject in school? That's easy. Um, I, I always liked math and science. Um, I was very fortunate that in seventh grade, I, I had two, two teachers, both men. Uh, back, back then, having men in a junior mm -hmm. high school class was mm -hmm. rare. Uh, teaching was left to the women, but, mm -hmm. but I had two strong men. My math teacher was a long name, King Benjamin Lindbergh Jeffcoat, who <laughs> later went on to become a principal and then the superintendent of mm -hmm. education in the state of South Carolina. Wow. Uh, and then Mr. James P. Neal, who, um, who was my science teacher. Mr. Mm -hmm. Neal got me introduced into science fairs. Um, mm -hmm. I did it in seventh grade and never looked back after that. I would not let a year go by that I didn't participate in a science mm -hmm. fair project. Uh, and then Mr. Jeffcoat introduced me and several other members of my class to what then was called new math. Students mm -hmm. today know it as set theory or mm -hmm. other kinds of things, Venn diagrams, so they know mm -hmm. all this stuff. But it is what, what people who are planners in big business today mm -hmm. use. And, and he taught us that when we were in eighth mm -hmm. grade. So mm -hmm. math and science have always been my favorite. Mm -hmm. well, well, being here um, uh, working out of Goddard Space Flight Center and, and using uh, the technology from uh, Langley, mm -hmm. the digital learning network, you know, which you know, I, f I find very fascinating because this, I was really surprised to learn that a lot of our educators out there, a lot of our school systems mm -hmm. and school districts don't know 
that NASA has created such a vast wealth of information mm -hmm. and, and how they can take advantage of that opportunity mm -hmm. to help bring their kids up to the level where, where you would consider them saying, hey, I, I really like this individual to be a member of NASA. Yeah. Uh, and can you elaborate on that a little bit? I can, and I can tell you, you know, I don't know whether there's anybody on, on the net this time from Australia, but, but the Distance Learning Network gives us the, the capability of reaching out to almost anybody anywhere in the world that, that can get into a video teleconferencing system that's compatible with ours. We've actually, in the past, after I went down to Adelaide, Australia, and visited a, um, a science center where they mm -hmm. actually had a Mars yard, mm -hmm. and they were, they were doing rovers and mm -hmm. robots and stuff, and we said, boy, that... That would be great if some of our kids in the U.S. could have mm -hmm. an opportunity to participate in that. Came back and talked to the folk in the Distance Learning Network, and lo and behold, we were able to hook up with, with students in a museum, mm -hmm. uh, in a science museum mm -hmm. in Adelaide, Australia. And so this capability allows us to do that. I, I, we have actually used it from a, on occasion working cooperatively with an organization mm -hmm. that supports military children mm -hmm. overseas, an organization called the Military Child Education Coalition. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a system that's very similar to our distance learning network. We found out they were compatible and so we were able to interconnect with that so we could give NASA content mm -hmm. to uh, military students, military kids mm -hmm. around the world to try mm -hmm. to help them know what what students in the United States can get almost any time they want. Well, you know, I, I, I know that one of your most recent successes is was the mission to uh, Jupiter yep. with, uh, with Juno, and, and now we're seeing some yeah. unbelievable uh, photographs coming back from, from that. And then uh, the uh, previous success of, uh, of um, the uh, New Horizons yep, and going to Pluto. Going to Pluto. Yeah. Uh, yeah, could you, as the administrator, yeah. tell me a little bit about that and uh, how excited you were I, when you I saw I get kind of giddy when I talk about them. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're sitting here at, at the Goddard Space Flight Center, as you mentioned, and um, they had a huge part to play in both those missions um, because almost everything we do today is collaboration with industry and academia and mm. our foreign partners. Um, Goddard has the premier astrophysics uh, instrument in mm -hmm. preparation right now called the James Webb Space mm -hmm. Telescope that's going to allow us to look uh, in a couple of years at distant planets in other solar systems wow. and other galaxies wow. and it's not very far from here in test mm -hmm. so it's fascinating. Um, I think it's missions like Juno, like New Horizons, mm -hmm. uh, like some of the ones that we, we just launched on the 8th of this month uh, the 8th of September, a mission called OSIRIS-REx mm -hmm. that's actually traveling over the next year or so to a, an asteroid, a pretty big asteroid that's mm -hmm. going to pass by Earth a long way away from Earth, but, but will pass by anyway on its journey around the sun. And uh, it's called Bennu. Bennu. And OSIRIS-REx is going to go out, rendezvous with Bennu, and kind of search it out with cameras and sensors and everything, mm -hmm. decide where it wants to land. Wow. And then it's going to go down near the surface of the, of the astero asteroid, not quite land, but hover, has a big arm that's going to go down and wow. punch into the surface, rip, stick up dust and stuff, collect it, mm -hmm. put it into a canister, and then bring it back mm -hmm. to, the, to, to Earth. Mm -hmm. And in 2023, it's going to drop that canister from space mm -hmm. down into the desert, into mm -hmm. the Utah desert. And for the first time, we'll actually have samples Wow. Uh, from an asteroid that we can study to help us learn mm -hmm. a little bit more about our solar system, but more mm -hmm. importantly, about our own Earth. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm wearing a, an extra pin up here. That I don't know how, how many people can see it. Mm -hmm. I have my NASA pin, which I always wear, but I'm wearing another one that's for AmeriCorps. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's an organization that, has, that houses pla things like Teach for America. Mm -hmm. um, we work collaboratively with them in our effort to get information mm -hmm. into classrooms. Uh, Teach for America is an incredible program that takes college graduates or people who just finished their work and puts them in a classroom for a couple of years wow. to let them try to give students the benefit of all the experience they've mm -hmm. had. And so it's a very good program that helps NASA mm -hmm. to reach kids that we might not otherwise reach. Wow. And, and I know an, another question is probably very, very, a lot of people are asking, um, uh, and, and, and as a final question is, are we going to go back to the moon? Yes. Uh, it, and it's too long for me to explain, but I, I, we, we, the journey to Mars is, is in fact what it, what it says. It's a journey. It, a lot of people get hung up on destinations. Mm -hmm. Our ultimate destination for humans is Mars, mm -hmm. at least for the time being. Now, mm -hmm. my granddaughter said, why are we stopping there? But I said, that's another story. 
Uh, just let me get to Mars first. <laughs> but, but in order to get to Mars, we've got to perfect our technology. We've got to make sure that we understand everything we need to understand about l astronauts living in, in a hostile environment. So we've been working now more than 15 years slightly off the Earth, at 250 miles on the International Space Station. Astronauts have been living and working there. We're learning a lot about how do you live in those kinds of environments. We're developing technologies. The next 10 years, beginning in about 2018, we're going to be orbiting the moon again. We will have uh, SLS, the heavy lift launch mm -hmm. vehicle, and Orion, the crew module, that will take our astronauts back to the lunar vicinity. Mm -hmm. And our hope is that we'll be able to collaborate with our international partners, mm -hmm. with entrepreneurs and industry, mm -hmm. and begin to put things back down on the surface mm -hmm. of the moon, robotic. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be able to team with one of our international partners. They'll build a, a lander, a lunar mm -hmm. lander, and we'll be able to have astronauts back on the surface of the moon in the decade of the 20s, while NASA continues its focus of getting people onto Mars in the 2030s. So it's going to take a lot of things working right and a lot of collaboration internationally, but I believe it can be done. And, and we're working really hard to make that happen. Wow. Well, well I'd, I'd like to summarize here very quickly with our audiences is, is you, you have some major challenges. You need to become <laughs> that, that next intellectual capital. You need to figure out those propulsion systems that you need to have. And, and, and once you get your skill level, don't, don't just be mediocre, be best of the best. Yeah. That's what General, uh, General Bolden and Administrator Bolden. Can I make uh, one more recommendation? Sure. I know you're short on time. To, to understand what he's talking about, go to the NASA website, www.nasa.gov, and then up in the search box put Real Martians, R-E-A-L, Martians. And you will get an opportunity to learn about real lab <laughs> NASA people who are doing real lab things today, experiments, building hardware uh, that you saw in the movie The Martian, if you saw the movie The Martian. If you didn't, go see it because it's really good. <laughs> General, right. thanks for uh, Administrator Boulder, it's, it's a, indeed no, it's a, a pleasure. Thank pleasure you, you for being, making this all possible for our, yeah. our world to be able to, to, to benefit from this. Thank you. And thank, thanks for doing what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you.